Hi there, and welcome to my beginner's guide for Heroes Hour. I'm Icon, and in this video I'm going to talk about everything you need to know to enjoy this game. This video is also pretty much a detailed review about all the functions the game has in store for you, so if you're looking for something like that, you've also come to the right place. There are timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for a specific topic, you'll most likely find it there. And with that out of the way, let's get started talking about the game, shall we? First off, I want to give you a little bit of a summary what Heroes Hour has in store for you. If you come from the Heroes of Might and Magic series, you might already feel a little bit of a similarity, and you are right about that. The overworld screen, as you see it here, shares a lot of common ground with the Heroes series. Controls are very similar, outlook is very similar, so if you come from these series, you will find this game fitting like a pair of shoes you've been waiting for. For everybody who's new to stuff like that, I'm going to talk about a few more details. You're controlling a kingdom, one of 11 playable factions that totally differ in their playing style. You have heroes to conquer the world with, you get to build your towns to bolster up your army and do and all manner of different things. You have to conquer structures to get yourself resources to hire your armies with, and ultimately your goal is to defeat your opponent and win the game. Heroes Hour offers procedurally generated maps with specific seeds, so there's always a specific structure, so like four islands, two players, and something like that, but the map itself is always procedurally generated, so you have always a new and fresh map, which is freaking awesome. Old World is being played turn-based, just like you would expect it from a game like that. The combat is where the game goes into a real-time environment. You can give orders where the game pauses, but all in all, you play a real-time combat. And that's where the game totally differs from Heroes of Might and Magic in a very fresh and cool way, but we're going to talk about combat later in the video in more detail. What's left to say is... Heroes Hour is a really, really fresh and brilliant pixel art spin-off, if not reincarnation of Heroes of Might and Magic that definitely deserves your attention. If you like strategy fantasy gaming, you're in for a treat. This game is deep, it has a lot of stuff going on under its surface, and we're going to explore that during this video. But first, we're going to talk about how to read that user interface. So you see here our environment, pretty simply explained. Everything you can interact with, you can mouse over it. WASD moves the map, or you just uh, use the mini map, or you use the middle mouse button. Nothing really new there, and that's pretty cool because that means everybody can control it quite intuitively. Up here we see our resources. There's gold, ore, wood, mercury, crystal and sulfur, pretty classic materials that have been used in the Hero series as well. Down here we see our cities our hero, our mini-map, a few controls that we can use on the overworld, from digging treasures to casting spells to setting up a camp to bolster our defenses and bolster the income of, an, of a mine. Pretty cool stuff. And last but not least, there is the course of the week, where is also the end turn button hidden. After a week, there is new troops spawning for you in Evertown and also for the enemy on all over the map, and that's the cycle of this game. The city itself, Ever City, has this beautiful screen, and as you see here, the more buildings we build, the more vibrant this place will be. The controls here offer you the building roster, hiring military, this is for hiring heroes in the tavern, this is the major skill, this is the marketplace where you can trade materials at, and lots of these other functions here are specific to the faction you're playing. So the necromancer, for example, collect the souls of their fallen enemies, which they transform then in their town into new units, which can be controlled with its own little button menu here, whereas other factions have other methods of interacting. So this menu here is pretty dynamic for every faction that you play. But these parts, the building tree, the military and all these stay same for everybody. The hero screen is also pretty simply explained. Down here we have the units of the hero, here we have a stats, up here is the spellbook, there's the equipment, and there's the skill tree. We're going to talk about all these uh, things, how they work in detail in a minute, but that's pretty much the user interface. Of course, there's also the combat user interface, but I want to explain that when we're talking about the combat in specific. 
All right, well, let's get started about building stuff in cities and buildings on the map. So your building in the city works like that. You get to build one building per day. That's it. You can't build more than that. Down here you see the town level. Town level 1, 0 of 5. That means the town level of your city will increase as soon as you have built 5 things from this list. The town level also unlocks new tiers of buildings. So once we unlock the next town level, we'll also unlock the next bracket of buildings. And that's how that works. Uh, down here we see the daily income. and when you mouse over the buildings, you see what they do, gives one gem each day. Here you can recruit creatures, and all these things are pretty well explained. I don't need to explain the buildings itself, because the game does a very, very good job at this department. So, you click it twice, and then you build it. As you see here, we have now unlocked the next bracket of things, and once our town level is at 2, we're going to unlock the next tier, and so on and so forth. When you look at buildings that recruit units you see here you either create tri crowds or pandas here so you can mouse over to see what these critters do and once you build that building you get to select which kind of unit you want to train there whenever there are two units uh, icons beneath a building that means you have to select either one or the other you can though after building the shrine of beasts swap over to the other creature no problem you can only do this once per week though to avoid excessive swapping every building of these can be upgraded as well so here the hall of people is already built and offers us fighters as you see mouse over here you see also a couple of details about the units but more about that later and if we upgrade it, the fighters are transformed into disciples. Every building that produces units can be upgraded. Like, maybe not every, maybe there are a few outriders that I have missed so far, but like most of the stuff can be upgraded in this game. But also a lot of the other buildings can be upgraded as well. Check out these trees because every faction has really a very, very unique flair of how to build how they build for example this is a very asian faction so they feature tea houses that amplify their the interactions with the heroes it's really a joy to work through these things and the devs did really a great job here are a couple of other things that i want to mention the ford lets you choose what kind of unit shall grow more in your town. You can do this several times. There's the stronghold and the citadel. So you can decide for yourself what kind of creature you want to focus hardest on in your town development. The infirmary is a building that's open for pretty much every faction that has living units and is very, very recommendable because after combat, it will save half your dead units and put them back into town. Build that as soon as possible because it would really, really cut your losses by a lot. And everything else, well, check it out. I can't generalize it because every faction plays it and plays out differently. Buildings here on the map are a little bit different. So as you see here, the sawmill, once we capture it, it gives us two wood each day. So these buildings have to be captured and once they are captured, they do their thing permanently for you. There's lots of structures that can be captured in the game that are all well explained, so you don't need to worry about that too much. And that's what I wanted to say about buildings. We're going to talk a little bit more about the map in the next in well, in the next few minutes, but now you know how to do things in that department. Buildings on the map generally can't be built by the player. What way you can do your thing is mostly in the city. There are a few nodes where you're allowed to invest some gold for a new mine or something like that, but generally, there are cities that you conquer and build up. Most of the building happens here, like 95% of the game. Alright, let's talk about heroes. Heroes are the backbone of this game. You control a hero by just right-clicking somewhere and right-clicking yet again to send him to move. Once you move your hero on top of an enemy army, you see here it transforms red, the combat starts, and every hero has his own skill tree. This skill tree looks a little bit different for every hero and while I'm playing there's six different heroes for each faction three of every type so there's three war artists for artists for this faction and um, there are three for the other branch generally every faction has 
warrior heroes and mage heroes. So there's usually three mages and three warriors. What's really cool about this game is that this skill tree is entirely different for everybody. Every time they level up, you get to select one point there and you can level up the, them up several times and these skills are can I say they are really, really inspiring, interesting, and make the gameplay completely different for each hero. So it's really worth checking out their skill trees and working out your strategy alongside these. So I can't really talk good enough about this because this is where your heroes will be mostly different. And for example, this dude here gets a passive income of fighters and he's also bolstering small units pretty hard and you already can see a strategy just by checking out the skill tree and then you know how you want to build up your kingdom. Pretty cool stuff and I enjoy that a lot. Also worth mentioning, whenever you have learned like one of these skills, like once you have learned learning and legion, you can learn this skill. And as you see here, there are these arrows connected. You have always you always have to learn the two skills that are connected to the other one before you can learn it. Also, to upgrade skills further, you need to connect, you need to upgrade every connected skill above one time. So to get, for example, Legion level 2, you need to upgrade Union first to level 2, and then you can upgrade Legion to level 2. Same applies to these rosters down there, so leveling up these several times, the lowest tier skills, needs you, needs a lot of experience. This is pretty cool because this allows you to build a very, very specialized and unique heroes, even though the skill tree is always the same for the for the same character. Pretty cool stuff. Let's talk about these stats up here for a sec. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I want to cover them as well. So every hero has attack, defense, knowledge, and spell power. Luck and moral come to this as well. So it's pretty straightforward. Attack and defense increase the attack and defense of your troops. Knowledge is your mana and in also influencing how much mana you regenerate and spell power, well, makes the spells more powerful that you cast and decreases cooldowns. Luck gives you a chance that your creatures will deal tremendous amounts of damage and moral gives you a decent chance that your creatures will be absolute berserkers for 10 seconds whenever this triggers. So these things are all very very similar to Heroes of Might and Magic but where it really differs is the skill tree where you have absolute control about what you skill there. Unlike Heroes of Might and Magic, no randomness involved, you are absolutely deciding what's happening there. And beyond that, well, that's how heroes are controlled here. I'm going to talk about the heroes in combat uh, when we talk about combat, of course, as well, but it's pretty much all you need to know. The last thing I want to add is to hire new heroes, you'll need the tavern. That's the building where you can hire new, new heroes at, and it's really pretty spiffy to have them. All right, so next thing I want to talk about is the exploration part and how to how to play this map. So when you move your hero around the map, you'll be uncovering all manner of different things. So for example, here's a fountain, giving your hero extra movement. Oh, I totally forgot to mention these are your movement points. So when moving ar across the map, this green bar indicates how far your hero can move. So everything you explore can be... Well, as you see here, chests can offer different uh, rewards. Here we are plunder plundering some ruins, offering us some item. So here's a Berserker's Mask, offering us attack at the expense of defense. I'll take that. I don't want some foreign units there. And whenever a combat is involved, you see that the icon turns into a sword and the last cross is a red. So only take fights if you want them. How to know if you want to take a fight? Well, you see there, it's impossible, it says. So what to do? You end your turn, you get over to your town and you recruit new troops. So you walk your hero over there, then you build a new building. Let's say we're going to create the Hall of Crafts. Here we get to select what kind of unit we want, read them through as you see fit and select whatever you want to go for. I'm going to select the Fire Lancers here and you recruit troops by clicking here, pressing max, max, 
or you can select as many as you want to. And as you see here, they're automatically added into my army. That's how you recruit troops. It's that simple. And now it tells us that this combat is only of moderate difficulty anymore. As you see here, lots of uh, combats are still flagged as impossible, but there are a couple of things that the game now thinks we're able to do. And when you're exploring the map, a couple of things I want to talk about right away. It's really important that you try to spread yourself as aggressive as possible over the map. The faster you can conquer this territory, the better. So you, you really want to check that you can conquer these uh, mines that offer you permanent income as quick as possible. You want to pick up those loose materials that are on the ground as quick as possible and this pretty much is where you want to be. This is really a lot of fun. It's extremely easy to pick it up yet pretty hard to master because you can really invest a lot of uh, micromanagement and metagaming into how to do this so it's really a lot of fun and I can, can't recommend it enough to check it out. But in general the basic strategy is expand as fast as possible without falling flat due to that because the faster you generate resource the better okay so with that out of the way you almost know everything except for combat so let's ride into these guys and show you how it's done combat is pretty interesting i, uh, I dare say and it's really where the game is very very different to heroes of mind and magic i know i'm referring a lot to heroes but i'm talking only so much about it because i really feel a strong similarity that which is a good thing, and Heroes Hour is extremely fresh in that regard. Okay, combat. So we see here our troops. We can move by dragging them over the board. The troops can be moved. And you see here there are also some controls. You can right-click them to separate them. You can shift-click them to control. And while you hold shift together, you can melt them to a block. So there's a couple of freedom of choice things to position your troops well, so you can pretty much decide where your troops will start at. Your hero is also a unit that fights in combat, but if he goes down, he's not dead. He's just going to retreat to the back line and not do anything for the remainder of battle. While you mouse over each of your dudes, you can see their power, health, damage, and speed. Power is a pretty abstract term. The other terms are pretty simply understood. Health, when it drops to zero, you're dead. Damage is how much health you reduce per attack, and speed is how fast you move. Power is here referring to the unit power fielded. So Heroes Hour features a system where you're not allowed to drop as many troops as you want to on the field, which is really awesome because this makes it impossible to just win by default by flooding the battlefield with an insane amount of uh, units. You can change the amount of uh, unit power that you can field with skills and certain Factions are better at hosting big armies, and there's really a lot of deep depth in that, don't you worry. But the gist of it is, you can't have a reserve, and the reserve will be pulled into the fight after a while. So, there's really some depth of planning in that. Once you have pretty much set up everything you want to, you can also give commands to your dudes there. But overall, we start battle now. Alright, so once you've started battle, when you move your cursor up down to the lowest side... You see here, the battlefield immediately freezes. I get the cursor up here, and the fight commences. So, the real-time environment can be controlled quite decently. You can here give your units orders. You can also select a certain bracket of units. So, for example, we can select our fighters and send them somewhere. Or we can also press attack. So there's a, a lot of different things where you can give some direct orders to your troops. But all in all, this game is meant to feel a little bit chaotic in combat. And I think it's the intention of the developers to, to strip some power away from the player. To make it a little bit more random a little and a little bit less... <clears throat> predetermined who's winning and who's not. I personally find this combat system very very easy to pick up yet difficult to master because there's a lot of things that can go down wrong. So combat also rewards you with experience. I already explained how that works. 
with level ups come more and more skills and your heroes go crazier and crazier and at some point you'll have to fight the computer enemy and that's pretty much what I wanted to say about combat. There's of course way more to that and as you've seen I've really just scratched the surface with these tactics that I only showed that you can actually do them but not really how to work with them effectively because I find that's something each should figure out on its own and this is actually worth an entire video. Alright, let's talk about what the game has in store for you on a larger picture before we end this video. When we exit to the main menu, I already uh, mentioned it, but I wanted to show to you the entire scope of the game. So the lexicon here offers you information about the 11 factions. I just wanted to show them here again. So there's really a lot of difference. You can check out how every roster works out. You see how what rare creatures are involved. All of these can be recruited one way or another. There's lots of artifacts and lots and lots and lots and lots of content in there. I just wanted to showcase this screen here to show you how what, what an amount of depth this game actually includes beneath its pixel art surface. So these maps here, as you see, these are all the presets and every single one of them is at the end of the day, a procedurally generated seed. So once we start the game, you can check it out here. So it's generating the map here while we've selected that new map, new game, new fun. It's just, it's just brilliant like that. All right. So there's pretty much, not much I can't say much more about Heroes Hour at this point. I hope you had a pretty nice general impression about the game. And if there are any questions or something you might want to add, leave it in the comments box below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. I also do stream on Twitch, so you might want to check that out as well, if you might want to catch me live. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I can't recommend this game so far enough. It's really a lot of fun. It offers a lot of depth and it's pretty cool. The only thing you could not like about it might be the real time combat, but I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool this way and I hope you have a nice day. See you soon and goodbye.